I've had many students who hate writing topic sentences. Topic sentences can be tricky at first and may seem unnecessary, but once you're comfortable with how and why to write topic sentences, I promise your skill at writing them will improve and as a result, your writing will become more polished and effective. So let's talk about topic sentences. First of all, I want to start by pointing out that this video is about writing topic sentences, not one topic sentence. You will always need multiple topic sentences because they work together in your introduction, as you will soon see. So get that idea of one topic sentence out of your head right now because it's no good. In planning your introductions, think of an inverted triangle, or cone as my expert math students tell me. You want to start broad and gradually get to a specific point. The specific point you are getting to is your thesis statement, the argument or point you are making in your writing. The thesis focuses your writing, and many students are tempted to start their introductions right away with their thesis statements. However, as you can see from the triangle model, topic sentences should come first and work with your transition statements to build to your thesis statement. Here's why. Imagine this scenario. You're out at the store and suddenly a random person you've never met comes up to you and just starts ranting to you about a current event and their opinions on it. No introduction, no explanation, they just start going off at you. Might be a little off-putting, right? You would probably walk away and think, well, that was awkward. Well, that's how it feels for your reader when you leave out topic sentences and just dive straight into your thesis statement. The topic sentences are your way of easing the reader into the topic of your essay or extended writing. Introduce them to what you're planning to discuss and get them invested in why they should continue reading your ideas. Topic sentences are the broad beginning of your introduction triangle. They introduce the general topic of your writing, and with transition statements, they gradually get more specific until you finally hit on the specific point of your writing, your thesis. By then, your reader will have a decent understanding of your general topic and will be ready to hear specifics about your opinions and ideas. Before you can begin writing topic sentences, or really any part of your essay for that matter, you need to consider your audience and purpose. Who are you trying to reach or convince with your writing, and why are you doing it? Now, I know the obvious answer is, Miss Adams because she told me to, but try to think beyond that. Your intended audience and purpose will shape everything about your writing. Your word choice, style, and introduction will be very different if you're writing an opinion argument piece about the amount of testing at your school than if you're writing a creative short story or an analysis of writing technique. Once you've determined your audience and purpose, think about what kind of introduction would best reach and interest that audience and help you achieve that purpose. What will keep people reading? What will guide them to understand your ideas? When you are ready to actually start writing your topic sentences, you want to think about using them to guide your reader to your thesis. For many students, topic sentences can be tough to think of because they are often misunderstood. Many students think topic sentences are just generic, vague first sentences, but that's not true. Topic sentences are your way of guiding your reader to your point. One thing that makes writing topic sentences easier is outlining your ideas for your writing task before you get started. Organizing your ideas in an outline will allow you to know where you want your reader to get to, your thesis, before you start writing. Just like how you would want a map or directions before driving to a place you've never been, your outline is the map to your essay ideas, and the topic sentences are your way of directing your reader from this super broad subject and gradually leading them to your specific thesis. Notice in this example how the topic sentences start out with just a general discussion of the issue of masculinity in Macbeth, but gradually start kind of turning the reader toward my real point, that such rigid gender roles restrict both genders and promote violence among men. Here's another example for my visual learners. Have you ever seen the commercials for animal shelter charities? I hate those commercials because they break my heart. Those charity groups are using their commercials to try to get you to donate money to save the animals. That's the point of the commercial. But they don't just open the commercial and say, hey, you, we need money to save our dogs. That's too abrupt, too rushed. Instead, they begin by showing images of the animals, then how the animals are suffering, then discussing their general needs, then their lack of funds, and only then do they get to the real point, their thesis, that you should donate money. This gradually pulls you in. Without this introduction, the commercials would not be as effective, just like your introduction would not be as effective without topic sentences. 
Many students have asked me about using rhetorical questions as topic sentences. I personally avoid making students use rhetorical questions in their introductions. Don't get me wrong, rhetorical questions are great, but only if they are done correctly. Here are my top mistakes to avoid if you choose to open your writing with rhetorical questions. One, never start with a rhetorical question and then jump straight to your thesis. Just like with regular topic sentences, you should use transitions and build to your thesis, leading your reader to your ideas. Jumping from one rhetorical question straight to the thesis is awkward and abrupt. You need the sentences expanding and transitioning to develop your idea for the reader. Two, avoid using lazy points of view in your rhetorical questions. If you write the way you talk, just using first and second person point of view without purpose, it comes across as immature and a bit weird, to be honest. You can see my video on proper use of point of view for more information about this, but if you just randomly address the reader in a rhetorical question with no greater purpose, it just sounds weird. Three. Don't make the rhetorical question too easily answered. Rhetorical questions are meant to make the reader think deeply about an issue. So if you open your essay with something like, have you ever been sad? The reader will probably just think, yeah, duh, of course I have and it sucks, instead of thinking anything deeper. If you're going to use a rhetorical question, be sure it is something that will really challenge your reader to think about how they might respond. That's what gets people invested to continue reading your ideas. Here are some final tips and tricks to help with your topic sentence writing. First, if you sit down to write your essay and you are really having trouble thinking of your introduction, just fill in your thesis and move on to your body section. The wonderful world of computers means you can always go back and write your topic sentences later. Many students find it easier to write the bulk of their essay and then go back and add the introduction later, which is totally fine. Just make sure that you remember to actually go back and write it. Don't forget and just leave it blank. Second, here's a specific tip for my AP students on your AP exam essays. Ideally, of course, you want to include a proper introduction with topic sentences for your essays on the exam. However, in the exam setting, your priority should be writing a complete effective argument and finishing on time. So if you're running short of time, skip your topic sentences and just start straight with your thesis. I know, I just contradicted everything I've said in this video, but the AP exam readers know that you are under a time constraint and a well-written thesis will suffice for your exam essays if necessary. I hope this video has been helpful and given you a better understanding of how and why to write topic sentences. Now you're in charge. Good luck.